Well, greetings, greetings, greetings to you all. Hello, everybody. And we say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, wherever you are watching from in the world. Welcome to Bone of My Bones Marriage School of Ministry with Pastor Maureen. And Pastor Chris. Amen. It is good to be back with you another month. Amen. And we are so grateful to God. Amen. Today, we're going to be concluding on our teaching of roles and authority in marriage and what the Bible uh, has to say. Yes. And what we want to remind you is if you've missed any of the teachings, you can go to our BTM Lifelight YouTube page and you can pick up all of our teachings from there. We have a Bone of My Bones uh, playlist, so you can go directly there yes. and pick up the teachings from there. Amen. Amen. So we want you to be encouraged uh, today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And uh, just by uh, the first way of introduction, I want to just share a couple of points here. Um, and then we're going to be doing a couple of prayers that came into my spirit not so long ago, actually, as I was mm -hmm. uh, thinking about what I needed to do, I was thinking about what I perhaps need to do. And so we're just going to just follow the leading of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we want to remind those of you who are watching today that marriage was instituted by God and he is therefore very keen that the great, this great institution that he had organized, he wants it to be conducted the way that he intended. Mm. You know, God has an ideal yes. and he wants it conducted that way. That's right. We know that even in the times that we are living in, that marriage is under attack. Mm. You know, a fact that is all too obvious when we consider the amount of divorces that are taking place even among those who are born again. Indeed. And the misery experienced by some, unfortunately, who are still together. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. very, very sad. Very sad. The enemy of our souls has targeted marriage because he wants uh, this wonderful institution that was created by God. He wants it to fail. Yes, he does. And instead, he wants people to opt for his counterfeit and live together because this breaks the law of God. Mm. You know, and uh, we want to say today that we are here to stand up for marriages and to stand with you in your marriage, yes, amen, yes. amen, and to say, let the Lord's name be magnified in your relationship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, however, we are the people of God. Amen. We Amen. are the people of God and we have been given authority over all the power of the enemy. Therefore, we need to use the mighty name of Jesus and exercise our authority, calling into order uh, anything that has become out of order in our lives. Amen. Amen. And we are to assert our right to have not just a good marriage, but a marriage made in heaven. Amen. Amen. And one of the ways that we do this is to pray the word of God into the situation. Yes. Praying the word in faith will achieve the desired results because according to Hebrews 4 uh, verse 12 from the, the uh, Amplified Bible, the word of God is active, operative, energizing and it's effective. Amen. Amen. So once we put God's word in our mouth and we release it into the atmosphere, it has the ability uh, to counteract every plan of hell and to turn things around. around. Amen to that. Amen. So one of the greatest things uh, a, a husband or wife can do is not only to pray for one another, mm. but to pray that each will fulfill their responsibilities to each other and to their families in accordance with God's word. That's right. Amen. Amen. This is so important. Mm. For instance, our duty as husbands is to flow in God's ideal for the relationship. Mm. And this means embracing the presence and power of the Holy Spirit so that our lives are directed and they are inspired and they are shaped and they are governed by God. Yes. Amen. Amen. God's word should govern exactly what we do and how we do it. Mm. Amen to Amen. that. Glory Amen. be to God. If the Holy Spirit is the prime mover of inspiration in your life, then you should be inspired to do things God's way. Yes, Amen. Right. Come on, somebody. This is true. 
Glory be to God. So we must look to the Holy Spirit as not only our teacher, but also our divine enabler, yeah. who makes it possible to pray prayers that are motivated, inspired, directed, and divinely energized by him. Yes. Amen. Amen. So therefore, if your marriage is far from ideal, make the decision now yes. to do something about it. Hallelujah. Fight for your marriage Hallelujah. by using the powerful weapons of praying the word that God has given to us and see change take place. Yes. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. We need to be encouraged by the word of the Lord yes, today. We do. Amen. We do God's word is amen and, and amen. amen. And we need to be sure that whatever is going on in our lives, that we are seeking the face of God on a regular basis, amen, amen. so that we can do things His way. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So, you know, with us this morning, just stay with us this morning, mm. share uh, this teaching uh, this morning, amen, because there are so many relationships going through so many issues, and we want to say, we want to stand with you in prayer in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. And one of the things that really struck me as we've been doing these monthly teachings, and we've done it for about a year now, haven't we? Over a year. Over a year. Yeah, over a year now. Mm. And one of the things that really struck me is, is how important it is to pray for revival in marriages. Mm. You know, we, we hear the term revival. We hear the term that we want to see something happening in the spirit realm, glory be to God, to bring about changes. Amen. Amen. How about revivals in marriages? God, I'm telling you, that will make a significant difference. Amen. Amen. That we pray that every marriage, hallelujah, that's been going downhill, that has been struggling, we want to pray that these marriages are revived. Indeed. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, we, we want to pray that today. We want to we want to say that if your marriage is struggling right now, mm. we want to say in the name of Jesus, be revived. Amen. Glory be to God. Glory. And declare the word of the Lord over your marriage Amen. and pray right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For revival in your marriage. There Amen. are many who are struggling right now. Amen. Amen. Come on, we want to just pray right now for revival in our marriages. Yes. Come, come on, Pastor Mark. Just lead us in that baby girl. Come Amen. On. Father, in the this. name of Jesus, we come to you oh, on behalf of marriages. Allah. We know that you are the one yes. that brought man and woman together yes. in the Garden of Eden. When Adam was on his own, mm. you said it wasn't good for a man to be alone. Amen. And you brought Eve yes. uh, as his help me yes. to be beside him, to help him, to assist him, mm. to help him to fulfill his, his mission Amen. in life. Amen. She was exactly the right part partner for him yes. Lord so marriage was your idea but Amen. we know Lord that the enemy of our souls whatever good you have in instituted mm. he comes to spoil it yes. and there are many marriages today that you brought together mm. Lord but the enemy has put a, a spanner in the works yes. and those marriages are failing My we Lord. come against That's every awesome. work yeah. of the enemy yeah. against yeah. marriage yeah. in the mighty name of mm. Jesus we tell you devil take your hands off marriages in Amen. Jesus name and we pray that there will be a revival Amen. in the marriages that the love that the husband and wife first had for each other mm. will be re rekindled Amen. in Jesus Contra name sometimes Contra Lord one of the partners says I don't Contra love you anymore and they think that that's an excuse for them to run off and go and be with somebody else mm. but I pray in the name of Jesus that people will be committed to Amen. their relationship Amen. and Lord that what fire has gone out will be mm. will come back again Amen. you can Amen. rekindle it Lord Contra you are Contra able Contra to do Contra exceedingly abundantly mm, far yeah, over yeah. and above anything we dare ask or think yes. according to the power that works within us Amen. and so father in the name of Jesus okay, we yeah, commit yeah, marriages yeah, to yeah, you yeah, we yeah. pray that marriages will work yes. we say that where there has been a falling away they will come back again we thank you Amen. Lord even for marriages that have broken up oh, yes. but then Lord later on 
gone, the, those marriages have come back again. You know, we know a cousin of ours recently got remarried after being separated from her husband. The marriage broke down, but father, they came back together again. And we know that's happened in a, in a few cases. May it happen to others, Lord. May there be a rekindling in the name of Jesus. Let that fire burn again in the mighty name of Jesus. You want us to have the best relationships possible and you can put right whatever is wrong Amen. in those marriages Amen. and we pray that you will do so in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. On, we just want to praise God right now. Thank you, we Jesus. We want to see marriages restored. Amen. amen. And even those that are doing well, we want you to do better. Amen. Amen. So we rise up in the power of the Holy Spirit Amen. today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. For marriages to be revived yes. right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty Jesus. name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, we give you we praise. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, today, as I've done previously, I'm going to um, start by way of introduction by sharing some opening thoughts to cause us to start thinking about how important it is to follow biblical principles concerning roles and authority in marriage. Amen. Amen. Because that's the biggest issue in a lot of marriages, mm. is knowing, you know, who's responsible for what. And we've taught a lot on this over the last few months. And as I said, just go to our YouTube page, BTM Life, our YouTube page. You can pick up uh, the, the teachings on our playlist, Bone of My Bones playlist from there any ones that you have missed amen. Yes, amen now it is said that churches have an ex uh, uh, ethical uh, responsibility to promote healthy marriages yes. and that's the truth of the matter and that to fulfill this responsibility churches must have a clear understanding of the scriptural basis that the permanency of marriage is god's will Indeed. amen yes the bible tells us that permanency is god's will we know that, excuse me, that marriage is God's will, amen, and that's why we have just prayed for a revival in marriages, yes. amen, where it seems to be dipping, we want those relationships to be raised up, amen, right now, right now, in the name of Jesus, Hallelujah. glory be to God. It is unfortunate, but problems generally occur when some men, as the head of the household, become cruel dictators mm. who expect their wives to become servants. And problems can occur when some women disrespect their husbands mm -hmm. and treat them cruelly also. However, my beloved brothers and sisters, this is not God's ideal. Not at all. You know, God's ideal is that we have stability Amen. in our households. Yeah, yeah. That's why he brings a man and a woman together so that when they have children, there is stability yeah. in the household. Yeah, Amen. Yeah. There is order. Mm. There is structure mm. amen. amen and right now as i'm thinking about it now we want to pray for restoration of families mm. hallelujah we've already said that we, and in fact even people that we've worked with over the years we know that many were restored mm. simply by following the principles of scripture Indeed. amen so we want to pray for the restoration of families mm. amen today there may be some of you who have got you know, wayward children, wayward husband, a wayward wife. Mm -hmm. But today we speak, hallelujah, under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, that there will be restoration of families mm -hmm. and relationships in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray that you receive that today, Amen. right now. Yeah. Receive that right now yeah. in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you on behalf of families. Yes. You know that some of the families are uh, um, have broken down, mm. they become dysfunctional. Yes. And Lord, we know that that is definitely not your will. You not know, the all. divorces have taken place and sometimes the children go off the rails mm. as a result oh God but we come to you mm. in the name of Jesus That's and we real. pray that every dysfunctional family mm. will start to function according to your will Amen. we pray that you will bring healing in those relationships Amen. bring relationships back together again that have become disjointed mm. that have become toxic Lord mm. sometimes there's toxicity oh, in the marriage my relationship Lord. there my is Lord, such bitterness Lord. and such, um, such uh, anger mm. 
mm. in the relationships and the relationships have severed and mm. there's all kinds of hatred and unforgiveness mm. but we pray in the name of Jesus that where this is the case yeah. you will bring about healing Amen. you will bring healing to those relationships Amen. and help them to see the error of their way yes. and that there will be a joining back together again Amen. Lord we know that the, the, uh, the nursery rhyme Humpty Dumpty mm -hmm. sat on the wall Humpty Dumpty had a great fall yeah. all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty back together again Amen. but you father you are the one that can put broken pieces yes. back together again Amen. you are the healer of broken relationships yes, you are, fractured Lord. relationships Lord they can be brought back together again Amen. because of your healing power yes. and we pray in the name of Jesus that the Holy Spirit will reach into every fractured mm, marriage mm. every fractured relationship Amen. between husbands Amen. between husbands and wives and between oh, parents yeah, and yeah, children oh my God sometimes the children go off the rails the parents don't know where the children are they get into bad company they get into drugs they get into all kinds of things they get into the sex trade oh they make carry out of our the parents don't know where they are they've gone somewhere else they are separated from the parents because the enemy has taken control of their mind but in the name of Jesus we pray right now that you will bring those children back to their parents help them to come to themselves like the prodigal son Lord yes, yes, we pray yes, that yes. you will reach them right where they are mm. help them to see the degradation of their state Amen. and that they are better off coming back home Amen. that you will put your your spirit will speak to them Amen. and draw them back mm. and those relationships will be mended again Amen. we give you praise and we thank you Hallelujah. in the mighty name of Jesus Amen, Amen. Hallelujah. Who can receive in that prayer In today? the name of Amen. Jesus. Amen. We're not heard by accident. Hallelujah. We're not heard by coincidence. Amen. We are heard by the power of the Holy Spirit. Praise Hallelujah. God. We have prayed for revival in marriages. Hallelujah. We have prayed for, for, for restoration Amen. of our families in the name of Oh, Amen. Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Let me remind God. you that permanency of marriage is God's will. Amen. Amen. In Genesis 2, verse 24, it says, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall be united and cleave to his wife. Yes. And they shall become one flesh. Hallelujah. Amen. To cling or cleave means to be glued or to be devoted to faithfully. Amen. Yes. Amen. As in but as in uh, in, in the book of Joshua twenty three eight it says, But cleave unto the Lord your God as you have done unto this day. Amen. Mm. This means that the husband and the wife are to count on each other give their uttermost and to share deeply from inside and stick together through thick and thin. Amen. Mm. And right now there are too many marriages that are becoming unglued. Amen. Because of the pressures of life, mm. because of all the nature of sin, even perhaps because of mistakes that have been made uh, during your journey through life. But we want those marriages to be glued together Amen. again. Amen. Amen. We want to get you back to where God intended you to be Amen. in that relationship. And that's why we pray for the restoration of families. Yes. Glory be to God. That what was unglued, we want glued back together in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm. And if you're watching out there, please do uh, uh, send in your comments, send in your prayers right now so that we can pray immediately. Hallelujah. For your situation. Amen. Please do interact with us right Amen. now. Glory be to God. Now, marriage is viewed as a lifelong commitment where the two become one flesh. That's what the scripture says. Amen. They share an intimate relationship based on love, based on fidelity, mm. play, uh, based on mutual respect and also trust. And oftentimes, things happen in the relationship that causes either both spouses or each not to talk to each other, mm. not to forgive each other. But we want to say to you today that we want to pray that forgiveness flows in the heart of your marriage. Amen. Amen. 
Forgiveness is so important, hallelujah, as we live and share our daily lives uh, together, amen. amen. So we want to pray for the power and the anointing of forgiveness to flow into your marriage, where you can learn to love again, to trust again, amen. amen. So right now, if you know somebody who is going through this, you can, we, we can stand in the gap for them yes. right now. Amen. 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 There is a lot of unforgiveness in, in, in a lot of marriages today. There are some that don't put that up, that uh, feel that the other doesn't deserve uh, uh, their, their forgiveness. Mm. It's true. Yes. But yes. you are doing yourself a disservice and you are doing your marriage a disservice mm. if you cannot forgive and start moving forward in your relationship. Yes, Amen. Yes. So we're going to pray right now that the Lord will send the anointed, the spirit of forgiveness into your hearts right now, wherever you are. And the moment you pick it up, you need to grab a hold of that word forgiveness. And you, if it's a husband, husband, you need to forgive your wife. And if it's the wife or the wife, you need to forgive your husband. Mm -hmm. We're going to pray right now. Glory be to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you, oh God, for relationships, oh God, where there, where forgiveness mm -hmm. needs to be enjoyed. Yes. Uh, you know, sometimes we do things, we say things mm -hmm. that hurt another person. Yes. But I pray, Lord, that when we have done so, that we will have mm -hmm. uh, the humility mm -hmm. to apply apologize sometimes people are too prideful mm -hmm. full of pride um to to apologize when they've said something or done something wrong yeah, they don't want to admit to it but lord i pray mm -hmm. that you will help those who've done something wrong to recognize when they've done something wrong mm -hmm. and try to do their best to apologize yes. but either way lord help us if yes. we've been wrong mm -hmm. that we will be willing to forgive Amen. and that we wouldn't be too proud to say well you know we don't want that person back in our lives they've mm -hmm. done too many things wrong etc mm -hmm. jesus told us that we should forgive give and Amen. there was you know peter asked him how many times he said 70 Amen. times seven and it was a, a, an exact number lord but we should be always ready to forgive that's what mm. we're supposed to do as children of god under the new covenant in the kingdom of heaven yes. i pray lord that you will help us that we will be willing to use forgiveness you have forgiven us yes. of sins and and you brought us into your kingdom yes. and you want us to do the same thing mm. for others who have wronged us so we pray right now yes. that forgiveness will yeah. flow and that people will be released yes. because oftentimes when you're holding on to unforgiveness mm -hmm. it means that you are trapped mm -hmm. you are held in bondage the enemy can hold you and cause all kinds of problems mm -hmm. for you so we pray lord that those who are holding on to an unforgiving spirit mm -hmm. will let go of it so that you can bring them release and freedom Amen. in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to Praise God. Praise the Lord. Forgiveness is vital in your relationship. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be Praise to God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, what is important throughout our, Christian, our relationships is that we need to learn as husbands how to lead our wives. But we also need to learn as wives how we can follow that leadership. Amen. 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 You know, so I'm going to just really talk about how a husband leads his wife. Amen. Yes. Husbands leads. The husband leads his wife to make sure that they make all of their family decisions together. Yes. Amen. This means that he leads to make sure that they listen to each other, take in each other's views mm. and concerns as equal life partners and make sure that the decision made is mutually agreed upon. Yes, amen? amen. Agreed upon. Sorry. So we know that leadership is about listening and being able then to make decisions based on mutual respect. Yes, amen? amen. Not a domineering attitude. He does not make the decision in an arrogant and controlling manner. Mm, amen? amen. But he leads to make sure the decision is made together and reflects both of their concerns. Amen. And if they cannot make a decision at one point, he leads them to wait for a time when they can. Mm. Amen. Amen. Because sometimes you just need to chew things over. Mm -hmm. Amen. He also leads to make sure that they always discuss their views in love and gentleness. Yes. And so we are praying right now for the husband amen we are praying and we're releasing the anointing of leadership and, and the right attitude 
into the husband that he doesn't have an attitude of dominance or control, mm. but one who is led by God, amen, yeah. through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, yes. amen. amen. So we are praying that the husband leads according to what the scripture teaches amen. amen the bible says that that you know that there is god then there is christ then there is the man the man referred to here is the husband mm. amen. amen and then there is the wife so god pours into christ christ pours into the husband and we want to pray that the husband will pour in what he has received from christ into his relationship amen, amen. so we're going to pray that prayer right now that a husband hallelujah will lead under the anointing of the holy spirit glory amen. be to god father in the name of jesus we pray oh god that husbands will take up their rightful role in the relationship amen you call them to be the head of the house and to be the priest in the home yes sometimes husbands don't take up that mm. role and oftentimes a woman has to kind of do that because otherwise there would be a void amen but lord we pray that you will help the husbands to do the right thing and to be able to support the family in the way that you intended yes. that they will live their lives according to your will and according to your way when yes. things are done in godly order there is a flow mm. in the household oftentimes lord when the husband or the man of the house mm. um is uh, um leading he goes to church the children follow yeah. uh, that's not always the case with them with the mm. mother law but more often than 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 so is the case when the husband is the one that goes to church and he's following you and he's made a decision that that jesus christ is mm. his lord we pray right now for husbands that they will be the lead model in their homes they will fulfill their plan and yeah. they will fulfill your plan and your purposes for them that our homes will be in godly order yes. in jesus name amen hallelujah hallelujah amen. hallelujah we bless the name of the lord amen hallelujah. Now, when it comes to decision making, decision making involves submitting to one another's concerns. Yes. Amen. Yes. Uh, and also um, submitting to one another's needs and also interests as you make a decision together. Yes. This is very important. Mm. And this is how to apply what the Apostle Paul says in Ephesians 5.21, yes. where he tells Christians in general to submit one to another. Yes. He says submitting yourselves one to another in the fear yeah, of, of God. God. Amen. Yes. The easy to read version says, be willing to serve each other out of respect for Christ. Yes. Amen. Amen. And then you notice that after that is said, he moves immediately into talking about the husband and the wife in, in, in uh, Ephesians 5 verse 22 where he says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Yes. So he leads his wife in fulfilling their marriage vows and staying far away from any possibility of divorce. Mm. Amen. Amen. So here we know that God wants both the husband and the wife to fulfill their marriage vows and to stay together for life. Yes. Both are responsible not to let conflict or disagreements that they have drive an emotional wedge between them. Mm. Because God knows it is easy, very easy for two people to polarize in a relationship and blame the other. Yes. That's the truth. God gives the husband the responsibility to make sure that this does not happen. Mm. And that means that he makes sure that whatever can be done to prevent their marriage from going down the wrong path is done as far as he is able. Amen. Amen. He is the final safety valve for the marriage. But he has to make sure that he is flowing in God's ideal and God's order for the household. Yes. Amen. Amen to that. So we want to pray right now for the husband and the wife that according to the scripture submitting uh, yourselves one to another in the fear of God we want each husband and wife to be willing Pastor Maureen mm. to serve each other out of respect for Christ yes indeed amen amen come on we want we want you to pray that you will be willing to serve each other out of respect for Christ that yes. means following the principles 
of what God sets out in his word mm. for your marriage. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Just pray right now, Pastor Martin. Praise God. Oh, Father, we pray that you will just help Amen. the marriages. Help us that we will serve you out of respect for the marriages. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, lead us, direct us, yes. and strengthen us, Lord. Yes. We pray that your power will be in every marriage, yes, that Lord. you will guide us in every way. Shabbat we shabbat pray, shabbat holy shabbat God, shabbat that your shabbat presence shabbat will be there in every, every way. Bless us, Father. Guide us, Lord and yes. help us to do the right thing yes. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Serving each other, amen, out of respect for Christ. Amen. Yes. Amen. Out of respect, amen, Yes. for Christ. Amen. Amen. So that, that's the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor Moore. Now, what this means is that it does not mean that he is the one who apologizes when his wife is clearly wrong. Mm. But it does mean that he apologizes when he is wrong. Yes. And that he forgives when his wife apologizes. Mm. His wife is responsible before God to do the same. Yes. But God wants at least one person to be ultimately responsible to do that as a safety valve for the longevity of their relationship. Amen. God does not set uh, roles... Uh, 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 um, and, and, uh, and uh, things in the relationship just for the sake of it. God is a God of order, yes, amen, yes. and a God of structure. Yes, so yes. we know that he wants to see stability in your marriage, yes, amen. amen. And we want to see stability in your marriage also, amen. amen. So let's look about the limits of the authority of the husband, the, mm. li the limits of the authority of the husband, we're going. We're going in such a. a, 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 a listen, if you know somebody who's, who needs to hear this right now, just share it with them mm. right now. Amen. The question is asked: What happens if the husband asks his wife to do something that is not within his authority? That's quite interesting, isn't mm. it? The wife is to only submit to her husband as he carries out his biblical responsibilities because he has the authority to accomplish his responsibility, okay? However, if he asks her to do something that is not within his responsibility as a husband, she may refuse. Mm. Listen carefully. This is not a lack of submission because he has no authority to ask her to do something that is outside of the will of God. Mm. Let's, 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 let's make this clear, amen? For example, if a husband asks his wife to disobey the Lord's command, she may refuse because he does not have authority to do that. Mm. She is still in submission to his God-given authority even when she refuses. Mm. Do you understand that? Mm. And I think we need, to, we need to get this right. Amen. If he asks her to do something that she knows is injurious to the relationship, yes. she may refuse yes. because he does not have authority to do that. Yes. Amen. She is still in submission to his God-given authority even when she, uh, when he refuses, or when she refuses, amen? Mm. Now, if we ask her to do something that the Lord does not require her to do, she may refuse because he does not have authority to do that, amen? amen. She is still in submission to his God-given authority even when she refuses, amen? amen? Why? Because the Bible says that we have to be willing to serve each other out of respect for Christ. Mm. Now, did you understand that? Yes. That means placing value on what God says in his word concerning your marriage. Yes. Amen. amen. Anything that is outside of God's order, amen, amen, we have to refuse to do it. Yes. And that is why it's important that both the husband and the wife understand and place value on what the word of God says in the Bible concerning your marriage. Yes. Amen to that. Amen. It's true. So when we consider the heart attitude of the husband and the wife, the Apostle Paul and the Apostle Peter also talk about the heart attitudes of the husband and wife as they live together. Yes. Amen. Amen. The husband is to love his wife. Yes, he is. That is sacrifice himself to care for her yes now husbands i know there's a lot of you that are not doing this <laughs> amen 
but we've got to get right with the Lord so yes. that we can get right in our relationships. Amen. Amen. The husband is to love his wife. Yes. That is to sacrifice himself to care for her. Yes. Amen. Amen. Ephesians 5 verses 25 to 28 from the New King James Bible. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church yes. and gave himself for her, mm -hmm. that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the, the word. word, that he might present her to himself, glor a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. Yes. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. Indeed. Amen. Amen. Ephesians 5.25 says that a husband is to love his wife. Yes. Amen. Amen. Loving his wife refers to valuing her mm -hmm. as his wife and to make sacrifices for her because she is his wife. Yes. Amen. Amen. It refers to loving her as he leads her in following the revealed will of God for them as a married couple. Yes. Amen, Amen to that. Colossians 3.19 says, Husbands, love your wives and be affectionate and sympathetic with them and do not be harsh or bitter or resentful toward them. Mm. Amen, 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 amen. The Living Bible puts it this way, and you husbands must be loving and kind to your wives and not bitter against them nor harsh. Mm. Did you understand that? Yes, if so you are true. mistreating your spouse, you are doing yourself a disservice. Indeed. Amen. Indeed. If you are abusing your wife and you are beating up on your wife, you are doing yourself a disservice. Yes. Now you need to get help now. Mm. Amen. Because if you don't get help now, you are going to destroy the very thing that God had ordained to be perfect in his eyes for you. Mm. It's the truth. So true. So get help. Mm. Amen. There is help out there. We minister with couples in these situations. You know, get help and get it now. That's right. Amen. That's right. There are those that oftentimes they would have to separate until the situation is resolved mm. and they can get back together again. Mm. Amen. Yeah. It's so not right it's for not husbands right. to beat their wives, abuse them, treat all. them badly, throw things on them. That's why yeah. some, some, some men um, get very upset yeah. about uh, not the wife not cooking the dinner yeah. the way they like it, throwing the food over. You know, this no, is no. not you the right behavior. Things. That's very bad behavior. Don't do that. You know, you no. don't do things like no, that. No, 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 no. And that's why the Bible says, and you husbands must be loving and kind to your wives. That's right. And not bitter against them, mm. uh, nor harsh. Mm. Amen. So right now, if possible, we want to come against the spirit of violence mm. in the homes right now. Amen. We want to come against the spirit of abuse mm. in those families yeah. right now in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you right now on behalf of the families where there is abuse and there's domestic violence in that home. We know, Lord, that you do not approve of that situation. Oftentimes the church gets blamed because um, we try to tell people to stay, in that, to stay in a situation like that. And oftentimes the church tells people to stay and they don't try to address the problem. But we come against that problem in the mighty name of Jesus. We know it is of the the enemy mm -hmm. and we come against every spirit that is behind that domestic violence in the name of Jesus. Amen. We don't know what is going on between the person who's doing it. It could be the husband. Sometimes mm. it's the wife. It's very rare mm. to be the wife but there are cases where yes, the wife yes. is the perpetrator mm. of domestic violence right. and the husband doesn't hit her back because mm. she's a woman. Mm. So these things do happen. Yes. But Lord, wherever there is abuse, wherever there's mistreatment, mm. it is coming from the forces of evil and mm. people are being influenced by demonic forces for mm. whatever reason yeah. and so we pray God that the problem will be resolved Amen. and that the people in that household will be safe Amen. oh God I we pray that. right That's now that the right help yes. will be given to those families those mm. families need help Lord mm. and we pray in Jesus name that they will get the help they need to sort the problem out mm. so that this terrible abuse will stop Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus Amen, Amen.
Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. Listen to me, my brothers, my sisters, if that is you today, if you as a husband are beating up on your wife, you need to get help now. Mm. And if, if you as a wife are beating up on your husband, you need to get help now. Mm. Amen. And if you're a victim, and if you're you, a victim need you need to get help now. Yeah. And we as a body, we as the church, we need to ensure that we teach and we minister about healthy marriages. Mm. Amen. Not abusive marriages no. or violent marriages. Healthy marriages. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. We need to declare the word of the Lord and bring revival back into our household. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Husbands must remember that while they have been given the role as a spiritual leader of the home, it does not give them authorization to rule in a controlling, aggressive, authoritative way. No. Amen. Being domineering, controlling, or disrespectful to one's wife is sinful. Yes, it's Amen. True. You are treating as rubbish that which God has called very good. Yes. And the Bible yes. says that he that finds a wife finds a good, good thing. thing. Amen. So the husband is to be considerate of her and respectful of, excuse me, of her. Amen. Amen. First Peter 3 and verse 7 says, Likewise, you husbands, dwell with them, your wives, according to knowledge, yes. giving honor to the wife as the weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace of life, so that your prayers may not be hindered. Be hindered. Mm. Amen. Did you hear that? Yeah. Your prayers will be hindered if you ain't treating your wife right. Yeah. Amen. Yes. The husband is to be considerate of her and to be respectful. Amen. That's right. Come on. The husband is to be intentional about understanding and being sensitive to his wife. Yes. Amen. Not doing so will hinder the husband's spiritual life. Mm. Come on. You might be a great speaker and a great orator, but the spirit in that, in that oration is not going to be effective. No. Because of the way that you are treating your spouse. Mm. Come on. Remember First Peter 3, 7. We just read it. I'm going to read it again. In the same way you married men should live considerately with your wives. This is from the Amplified Classic. With an intelligent recognition of the marriage relationship. Honoring the woman as physically the weaker. But realizing that you are joint heirs of the grace that of God's unmerited favor of life. In order that your prayers may not be hindered and cut off. Otherwise, you cannot pray effectively. Mm. Amen to Amen. that. Come on, somebody. This is a very true statement. The Apostle Peter says that a husband is to be considerate and respectful toward his wife. Mm -hmm. Considerate refers to showing understanding to her as his wife. And respect refers to respecting her important role as his wife in his life. Mm. Amen. 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 Let me just give you this short footnote here. Weaker vessel, which is a possible idiom for weaker livelihood. Widows and female orphans were horribly disadvantaged in the time this was written. Without an advocate, women were often oppressed by corrupt political officials. Mm, yeah. How very sad. Mm. This unique New Testament phrase describes the joyous grace that husband and wife share as a married couple as co heirs of eternal life. Indeed. Amen. Amen. We are to place value on what God says in our relationship. Yes. Amen. And that is why the husband is to be considerate of his wife and respectful to her because when he, he is spiritually mature, then the relationship goes to a different level. Yes. Amen to that. Glory be to God. The but the Bible also reminds us that wives are to respect their husbands. Mm -hmm. So it works both ways, amen? So God is a God of order. He doesn't mess around when it yes. comes to the things that are important, amen? So wives are called to respect and be submissive to their husbands, and this involves a willingness to assume the role of wife that is Christ-like, encouraging, respectful, and helpful to their husbands. Mm. Now, Genesis 2 and verse 18 from the Amplified Bible says, now the Lord God said it is not good or sufficient or satisfactory that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper that is suitable, adapted and 
complementary. Amen. Amen. So when God creates us, we are made to be complementary right. one to another. That's right. We learn to draw the best out of each out other. Of each other. Amen. Lord. So that, wow, Amen. wow, wow. Hallelujah. Listen to Ephesians 5, 22 to 24 from the Amplified Bible. It says, wives, be subject to... Uh, be submissive and adapt yourself to your own husbands as a service to the Lord. Mm. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, himself the saviour of his body. As the church is subject to Christ, so let wives also be subject in everything to their husbands. Now I know that if the husband is leading right, then the wife will follow right. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's that's a that's a true statement because there's a there's a spiritual flow that happens, Amen. When each are putting into practice what the Word of God has to say, that's right. Amen. Ephesians five and verse 30, thirty-three from the Living Bible, it says, "So again I say, a man must love his wife as part of himself." Yes. And the wife must see to it that she deeply respects her husband, mm -hmm. obeying, praising, and honoring him. Amen. It, now, respecting one's husband does not indicate that the wife is of lesser value than the husband. No. I want us to make this very clear. Respecting one's husband does not indicate that the wife is of lesser value than the husband. No. Rather, it involves being his partner in the way that he, that is designed to bring out the best in him. Amen. God's design for a wife's role in marriage does not include being dominating nor being a doormat. I want us to make understand this. That is not biblical. Because either extreme will promote an unbiblical marital relationship. And you know what? That needs to be corrected. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Now, Ephesians 5.33 says that she, as a wife, is to respect her husband. Amen. Yeah. Now, respect refers to respecting his important role mm. as her husband in her life. Yeah. You are both important to each other. Mm. Amen. Yeah. So you will notice that both of them are to respect each other. Mm. Amen. Amen. This is so important. Each of them is to respect the other because of their roles as husband and wife in the life yeah. of each other. Yeah. Amen. Can I just say something? Yes, you, you know? can. Yes. Um, you know, what we're talking about mm. is, is the fact that the Bible gives the, the directives of the creator of the universe. Yes. The one who created us as human beings, yeah. made us, knows all about our relationships. Mm. He's put a blueprint in his holy word about how things ought to work. Mm. We Things go astray when we start to step out of that order. And Absolutely. we think that the Bible, yeah. uh, you know, we're not going to follow the Bible. We don't like what the Bible says. And we, we start to go uh, contrary. Mm. Then, you know, we are looking for trouble Absolutely. when that's the situation. Yeah. Because the enemy is always going against the word of God and mm. he will try to instill ideas into our minds for us to rebel mm. against the word of the Lord no, and no. this is exactly what happened in the beginning of, uh, in yeah. the Garden of Eden yeah. because yeah. Adam and Eve rebelled against um, what the Lord was, was saying to them mm. then you know that's why we're in this trouble now that's, that's right. why we because when you rebel against the word of the Lord mm. it will invite trouble yeah, will. and the enemy will always try to incite us to, mm. to rebel against the word of the Lord but once we make up our mind that we're going to follow mm. what the Bible says we will get good things. It doesn't mean that we never have trouble, mm. but we will be overcomers over that trouble if we we follow what God's word says. Absolutely, we Amen. can come through problems Amen. and then come out the other side on a on a good footing. Amen to that. Glory be to God. And this will be a good time now to pray that each will respect the other according to the Scripture. Amen. Amen. Respecting that means that we respect each role. The wife's role, the husband's role. We respect it, we honour it, we place value on it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that the husband and the wife will respect each other's role. Amen. That we will realise what our responsibilities are yes. according to your word and we will set our minds mm. to obey it. 
you know, oftentimes we come under pressure from society to mm. go in a completely different way. And people will tell us, sometimes people who are governed by the world's way of doing things mm. will try to put pressure on us for us to go in an opposite way to your word. Yes. But I pray in the name of Jesus that you will help each and every one of us, that mm. we will make up our minds, yes. that we will follow your will and your way, and that we will respect one another's roles Amen. in the relationship Amen. and follow what you say, mm. and that we can get the very best out of the relationship mm. and out of the marriage marriage because we are following you and when we follow you a blessing is is designated amen. to us amen in jesus name amen. amen amen and amen glory be to god so we'll just pray that each will respect each other amen, amen. glory be to god thank you pastor Moore. now jesus um, gives us an, you know, Jesus. What I love about Jesus is that he was an example of the leader and follower roles. Mm. Amen. Jesus himself um, demonstrated the inherent dignity of each role of the husband and the wife. Mm. He was both a leader and a follower. He had both an authority role and a submitter role. Yes, yes, he did. He had authority he over all mankind as a son of God, mm. yet he exercised his authority in submission to God the Father to fulfill his role in redemption. Yes, he did. He exercised his role of leadership by doing it to meet the needs of others. Mm. Amen. So he was a true servant leader. Mm. Amen. Now, a servant leader leads with the goal of serving others. But he still leads. Mm. Now let's make that clear. I want to say that again. A servant leader leads with the goal of serving others, but he still leads. Mm. Amen. This is what Jesus refers to when he says, the Son of Man came to serve. Mark 10.45 from the easy to read version says this. Yeah. Follow my example. Even the Son of Man did not come for people to serve him. Mm. He came to serve others and to give his life to save many people. Mm. So Jesus also submitted to the Father's will. Yeah. His Father had authority over him, and what did he do? He submitted to the will of the Father. Yes, he did. John 6.38 from the Amplified Classic says, For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will and purpose, mm. but to do the will and purpose of him who sent me. Sent me. Amen. Amen. So in our marriages, we are to do the will of the one who sent us. Yes. Amen. Yes. Of the one who instituted marriage. Mm. Amen to Amen. that. So if we are going to fulfill God's mandate in our marriages, then the husband and the wife must follow the principles that are laid out in Scripture. Yes. Amen. 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 Each must learn to serve in a way that values and honors the roles of the other. Yes. Amen. In so doing, submission will not be an issue and authority will not be aggressive. Mm. Amen to that. Remember Ephesians 5.33? This is from the Living Bible. So again I say, a man must love his wife as part of himself, and the wife must see to it that she deeply respects her husband, mm. obeying, praising, and honoring him. Mm. Amen to that. So there's a prayer that we want to pray right now, because it's this part I just mentioned here. If we are going to fulfill God's mandate in our marriages, the husband and the wife must follow the principles that are laid out in Scripture. Yeah. Each must learn to serve in a way that values and honors the roles of the other. Mm -hmm. Amen. And in so doing, we'll, um, submission will not be an issue and authority will not be aggressive. Mm -hmm. So we want to pray that both the husband and the wife follow the principles that are laid out in Scripture. Amen. That's important. Mm -hmm. Don't you believe? Mm -hmm. It's important. That worked for us. Yeah. Amen. So Apostle is going to pray that prayer right now. Father, we pray that the husband and wife Amen. will uh, do their, their job in a way that will follow scripture, that each person will learn to serve in a way that values and honours the role of the other, that we will not be in competition with one another, right. but we will recognise that we have mm. different roles mm. and that we should, once we 
recognize and we follow and we value the roles of the other person, then we can work in harmony with one another. Amen. And so, Lord, that we will be submissive. Your word, your word tells us that we should be submissive one to the other. And that, you know, that, that scripture is oftentimes overlooked. People oftentimes say that women should sub submit to the husbands, but they don't realize that the same scripture, in the same chapter, it says that husbands and wives should submit to one another. There are times when one needs to step down yes. and, and show a bit of humility. That's right. And I pray, Lord, that you will help us to recognize when those times are and that we will work in harmony, that we are always working towards the harmony of the relationship Amen. so that we can get the best out of the marriage and get and you can can get the best out of us mm. you've called us together to perform a function to, and for a purpose mm. help us to fulfill that purpose and to recognize what it is in jesus name amen amen, amen. I'm, listen i hope you're receiving these prayers today amen, amen. because we know we, we're not here by accident no. amen glory be to god now to bring this topic to uh, a necessary conclusion i want to reiterate some important points amen, amen. Because this is important, amen. Firstly, the husband must love his wife, yes. amen. In essence, when it talk about agapeo, agapeo means that your wife needs to be the object of your love, mm. amen. So instead of using his leadership to control or dominate his wife, God calls the husband to use his leadership to love his wife, yes. amen. amen. God planned this from the beginning. Yeah. The husband would lead through loving his wife. Yes. Amen to Amen. that. What should this love look like? Well, the Apostle Paul teaches that the husband's love should mirror Christ's love for the church, yes. which we learn in Ephesians 5, 25 to 28. And as I said, we're repeating some of these scriptures because we really want to get this into your psyche. Amen. It says in the New King James that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle. That's in verse 27 of Ephesians 5, uh, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. So what can we learn about uh, a husband's love from Christ's example? Well, the husband's love must be realistic. Mm -hmm. Amen. The husband should have no th fantasies about the woman he is marrying. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. It says, husbands love your wives in Ephesians uh, 5 verse 25 husbands love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and what did he do he gave himself for her mm -hmm. amen. amen Christ loved the church but he knew she was sinful and disobedient but Christ gave his life for the church while knowing her faults mm. his love was realistic we know that there are things that we're going to dislike mm -hmm. and we, um, in, in the relationship but what we do is that we learn to move forward mm -hmm. in the relationship by, we say to this, well, I don't like that. Mm -hmm. The person doesn't have to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. You understand? Your relationship needs to be realistic because there's going to be things that you, you just find, you know, um, you just don't like. It's just one of those things. Mm -hmm. But you can make it work. Mm -hmm. Amen. It doesn't um, change how you feel about the other person. Mm -hmm. Amen to that. Also in marriage, both the husband and wife must grasp this reality. In fact, mu much of premarital counseling is about destroying the false expectations set up through mo romantic comedies and Hollywood and so on, which is true. Mm -hmm. You know, the husband must love realistically. This woman does not walk on water. Amen. <laughs> she has been infected by sin just as he has. Yes. So yes. she must be reformed daily by God's grace and she must be loved through her faults. Yeah, as Christ as, was uh, exactly. was us. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Scripture says, love covers a multitude of sins. It does. Amen. It says uh, in First Peter 4, 8, Above all things, have intense and unfailing love for one another, for love covers a multitude of sins, forgives and disregards the offenses of others. Mm. Amen. That doesn't mean you condone anything. But oftentimes, it, take, it really does take a weight off of you mm. when you just learn to forgive. Amen. Mm. It says, having a realistic love is important for both husband and wife because if they don't have it, they will become disillusioned. That's true. No doubt, one of the reasons for such a high number of divorces in the first year of marriage is because most love is not realistic. Yeah. I think also, just going back to that yeah. scripture in 1 Peter, 
yeah. four eight. I love that part where it says it it um love covers a multitude yeah. of sins. Mm. It for, it it forgives and disregards, yeah, disregards the offence of yeah. I think oh, often, too often, mm. we spend too much time uh, regarding yes. the offences. Yes. That offence can be, uh, you know, a death knell yes. to a marriage. When people keep taking offence and they keep um, going on about the offence and they keep mm. telling other people about the offence, yeah. you know, that offence will kill your marriage. Amen. And, you know, if, we're, if we learn to operate in the love of God, yeah. that we disregard the offence, that we mm. stop paying so much attention to it yes. and we learn to lo to love beyond the offense yes. it will cover the multitude it, 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 it really will and that takes personal discipline yes it does but when you are in tune with god's word mm. what happens is that it won't be an issue for it you won't to be do. an issue you know we, it becomes an issue because we question mm. whether or not we want to do this mm. but we need to just come in line with what the word of god says yeah. so therefore the husbands and wives uh, 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 um, love must be realistic, mm. amen. They're, they're going to be those little things, the little things that you don't like, but you can disregard those things mm. and just move on. But we need to go to the higher love. Amen. You know? we, yes, we do ha love each other, yeah. you know, with the with the filio love and That's the right. eros love. That's but right. we need to have the agape love because yeah. it's the agape love that will keep the marriage amen. going through all the faults and all the the, the, the nuts and and the bolts and all the, uh, the that will help us to be able to survive those things amen. when we graduate mm. to the love of God and have agape love towards each other. Amen. And also, we need to, another point that we need to raise is that the husband love, the husband's love must be sacrificial. Mm. He is to love her as Christ loved the church and be willing to die for her. In other words, be willing to die for self. Mm. Amen. And, 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 and as we learn in verse 25 of Ephesians 5, it is said that if anybody feels like the wife's role is unfair, they should give more thought to the man's. Some say that it is much easier to submit to someone than to give one's life for that person. Mm. This love that the husband is supposed to embody is impossible apart from the grace of God. Yes. To love sacrificially means that the husband must often give up other things in order to serve and please his wife. Mm. He must sacrifice for her. He must sacrifice self-time, friendships, career, entertainment and hobbies and so forth. It has to be balanced. This is what I'm saying. Mm. Amen in order to love his wife like Christ. I'm just talking about husbands at the moment, okay, because mm -hmm. this is the key, key points. Because for us, God has given us that leadership role, and we need to make sure we get it right. Yeah. Amen? Because we know by getting it right, the spouse will lead, uh, follow that lead quite comfortably. Mm -hmm. Amen? Also, the husband's love must be purposeful. Mm -hmm. The purpose of Christ's love is to make the church holy. Mm -hmm. Cleansing her by washing with water, with, with, uh, washing with the word. Amen. Ephesians uh, five twenty six and twenty seven, as we read earlier. Mm. Christ's purpose is to make the church a perfect bride. Similarly, the husband must love his wife through teaching her scripture, getting her involved in, in, in a Bible preaching church, and encouraging her to get involved with the ministries of the church. Amen. Amen. Each husband must seek to cultivate not only his wife's character but also her calling, mm. amen, so that she too can fulfill God's plan for her life, mm. amen. He must help her to discern her gifts and her talents and not be jealous of them, mm -hmm. amen, and encourage her in the use of them for the glory of God. Mm. This purposeful love also means that at times admonishing her to help her know Christ more, amen. Every man should consider if he is ready and willing to love a woman in this way even before getting married. Mm. Amen. Is he ready to be a spiritual leader? Let's consider that. Is he ready to be devoted to the spiritual development of his wife? Mm. This will take your relationship, I'm telling you, to a whole new level. Mm. Amen. Yeah, let me say something mm. on that point because... Um, with my um, with with our relationship, mm. uh, Pastor Conan was the one that discerned um, the gifts and the talent and the calling on my life that no. I didn't see. Mm. You know, um, I know that I'd been a teacher. I'd been teaching the word for many many years, 
but I didn't realize that I had a pastoral calling. I've mm. been, you know, I've been doing in ministry and I've been helping people that have been wounded and um, and coming into yeah. things because of, of the way that the Lord had led me to uh, in a ministry for the, the wounded and the broken. Mm. Uh, but I was also discipling people yeah. as well. Mm. And Pastor Colin recognized that the way that the Lord was leading me was a pastoral mm. calling. Mm. And so he, he made the recommendation that I be ordained as a pastor. Yeah. I was shocked. Yeah. Because it never in my wildest dreams crossed my mind mm. that I would be in a pastoral position. Mm. I thought maybe a teacher, yes, but mm. a pastor, no, that, mm. that never crossed my mind. But he said, well, what you're doing is pastoring. You are leading people, mm. you're helping, and you are shepherding people. Yes. And that's exactly what a pastor does. Mm. So, you know, your husband can, mm. if he's led by the Lord, help the wife yeah. to see what her calling is so that we can come into ministry together and that's exactly mm. what's happened with pastor colin and myself mm. that we've realized that the lord has called us to work together Amen. in ministry i thought that you know we'd be doing different things on our own mm. but that's not how it is we've just been locked together <laughs> <laughs> to, to complement each other Amen. for the glory of god yeah. praise the lord and i think that's that's what's important really i think what we need to be careful of is that we don't become resentful of gifts that God gives us, mm. but we, we ensure that we work together within those gifts. Mm. Because at the end of the day, it benefits both of you. Indeed. Because you are one flesh. Mm. Amen to Amen. that. So, you know, we need to be encouraged. Number four, the husband's love must be personal. Mm. Amen. He must love her as his own body. Amen. That's in verse 28 of uh, Ephesians 5. Every day the husband brushes his teeth or combs his hair and clothes himself. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. Every day he maintains his body. But sadly, husbands often go weeks without ministering to their wives. It is very easy to get so busy with life and work and ministry that you inadvertently allow weeds to grow in your marriage. Mm -hmm. It's true. Mm -hmm. Love must be personal. He must love her like his own body. He must daily take time to cultivate a happy home. Indeed. Amen. I think even uh, um, just a, a simple phone call that way, you don't have to stay on the phone for like long, but sometimes I'll just be more just to see how she is, you know, and then, and then we don't, we don't, you know, and then I say, oh, I'll ask for you later. Yeah, yeah. You understand? Maybe a minute. Yeah. Well, for. You don't have to, you, know, you understand? It's because, yeah. because, because she's in my mind. Yeah. She's in my thoughts throughout the day. So therefore, you know, I might send a message or I'll pick up the phone and just give her a call. You understand? There's nothing wrong with that, you know, because at the end of the day, your love must be personal. It's, it, your love for your wife must be to the point that nothing else overtakes it. Mm. You understand that? And it, you have to have the right balance. There are some husbands that spend time deliberately at work and will probably do overtime deliberately so they don't have to go home. Mm. And that's the truth of the matter. It is true. But, you know, no, no, no. We need to look forward to coming home mm. to one another. Yeah. Amen. Our home. We should, we should create an environment yes. where every p person in that family feels valued and wants to be mm. in that home and looks yeah. forward to coming home. There is an atmosphere mm. of love in that home. Amen. We praise God. Ooh. We give the Lord praise because often times when people come to our mm. home, they can feel mm. an atmosphere of love. They can feel yes. the power of God in the house. Amen. As soon as they step in, especially when we first moved here, people yeah. say, yeah, this is, that God is really in this home. We yeah. can feel the power of God here, we can feel the love of God, there's light mm. in the home, and that's yeah. what, you know we want that for every family Amen. we want that for every family, we want the, the light of the Lord to shine through, you know, people can always um, pick up on atmospheres mm. you know that, you know, if, if you walk into a home where two people have been each, at each other, and suddenly they've stopped but you know, just walking into that atmosphere mm. that there is an issue been something you know, but we, we pray that every home will be filled with God's love, amen, amen. that the presence and power of God's love will be in that home. Mm. Glory be to God. Praise God. Yeah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that every family will be able to sense your presence, that their homes will be an inv invitation for you to dwell. Mm. You know, the Bible tells us that where there's envy and strife, there is, uh, the, that's where there is every, every um, spirit of the devil. The devil is in that particular place. It tells us that in James. Mm. And so we pray, Lord, that we will not have an atmosphere in our home or create an atmosphere where the devil is comfortable, Amen. where he's putting up his feet, putting up his feet on our city, smoking mm. a cigar, mm. because we've created an environment where he is at home. Wow. But we 
create an environment where the spirit of mm. God dwells, where the angels are attending, and yeah. that you, oh God, take precedent in that home, that everyone is valued and loved yeah. and cared for, and they, they're happy to be a part of that environment. They're happy to come home, Lord. Amen. In the name Amen. of Jesus, help us to create that kind of atmosphere. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And amen. 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 Glory be to God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory Hallelujah. To God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Glory be to God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, when the world hears the phrase male leadership, it often has negative connotations. But it should not, if properly understood, you know, if it's properly understood, then you won't have negative connotations. Consider what Christ taught his disciples about leadership in the book of Luke, chapter 22, verses 25 to 27. Here's what he said. Jesus told them, In this world, the kings and great men, they lord it over their people, yet they are called friends of the people. But among you, it will be different. Those who are the greatest among you should take the lowest rank, and the leader should be like a servant. Who is more important, the one who sits at the table or the one who serves? The one who sits at the table, of course, but not here, for I am among you as one who serves. Mm. So as described in Luke uh, chapter 22, male leadership primarily means greater service. Amen. Mm -hmm. Christ told his disciples that whoever wanted to be the greatest must be like the youngest. Mm. The Jewish culture was very um, high rank, you know, had a but hierarchical, meaning that the youngest would always serve the oldest. Mm. But Jesus spoke to this culture and said that true leadership is servant leadership. To lead means to be like the youngest, the servant of all. Mm. True leaders will forego their right of being served in order to serve others. Mm -hmm. That's how husbands should be in marriage. They should be constantly humbling themselves in order to serve their wives. Mm. Amen. Christ demonstrated this leadership in John chapter 13 when he did the work of a servant by washing his disciples' feet. Mm. There is nothing negative about this type of leadership. Mm. God always intended this type of loving leadership for the marriage relationship and the husband must daily seek to cultivate it. Amen. Amen. Now, what are the other traits? What other traits should characterize gender roles in marriage? Well, the husband must submit to Christ's leadership. Mm. That's the truth of the matter. First Corinthians eleven three from the Amplified Bible, but I want you to know and realize that Christ is the head of every man. The head of the woman is her husband, and the head of Christ is God. Yes. Amen, amen. Now, you will notice here that you've got the word husband and you've got the word wife that are used. The word husband, the word, sorry, the way you've got the word that, that, that Christ is the head of every man, sorry. The word man refers to husband or one who has been betrothed to be married. This is the structure that God has mm -hmm. for the family. Amen. And it says the head of the woman is her husband. The word woman refers to wife or one who is betrothed to be married. Mm -hmm. So our head is Christ, mm. and Christ's head is God. Mm. Amen. But there is an order that it flows, God to Christ, Christ to man, man to his wife, and to his family. Mm. Amen. So in this verse, we see the divine prerogative. Christ submits to God, the man submits to Christ, yes. and the woman submits to man. Yes. That's her husband. If the husband is going to lead his wife according to God's design, he must first submit to Christ. Mm. Amen. It is for this reason that a wife must submit to her husband. For when she is following her husband, she is really submitting to Christ's delegated authority. That's right. So the husband has to be sure that he is submitted to Christ. Yes. In order to fulfill uh, God's will in your marriage. Mm. Amen. Amen. And in order for your wife to lead. Uh, sorry, to follow in the right way. Amen. Amen. So this brings what I call a grave responsibility to, to each husband to know Christ's leading. Amen. 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 He must truly be somebody who abides in God's word, one who prays so that he can discern God's voice. Amen. The man considering marriage should ask himself, 
am I pursuing the Lord in such a way that I can know his voice in order to lovingly lead a wife and a family? Mm. In fact, men need to be taught this even before they're married. Yes. Amen. They need to be taught about having a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Mm. Amen. Amen. So that they can fulfill their role as husbands and fathers in their relationships. Amen. Amen. It is commonly said, um, only those who are near hear. Mm. The husband must be near Christ, his head, to hear his voice. Mm. Only the husband who is near Christ will be able to model Christ and will be able to lead properly. Mm. Amen. This is also important for single women to hear and to consider because not every man is spiritually fit for leadership. Mm. They should ask themselves about a potential husband. Does this man love Christ? That's right. Amen. Is this man following Christ? Mm. You know, this is, these are biblical um, points I'm giving you to your head. They're not, you know, um, it's something that you just you really need to consider. Amen. Is he spiritually fit to lead? Mm. Now, one can be sure that if a single man is not faithful in following Christ, he will not be faithful when married. Mm, that's right. Um, look at Luke 16 and verse 10 from the New Living Translation. If you are faithful in little things, you'll be faithful in large ones. Yeah. But if you are dishonest in little things, you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. Husbands must be continually uh, submitting to the leadership of Christ in order to properly lead their homes. Yes. And this must be taught at an early age. Isn't that true? Yeah. So the wife then must submit to her husband's leadership. Yeah. As mentioned previously in Submission to Christ, the wife must submit to her husband. Ephesians 5.22 says, Wives, be subject, be submissive, and adapt yourself to your own husbands as a, as a service to the Lord. Amen. Now, Scripture instructs the wife to submit to her husband as though she were following Christ. The word submit is a military word that means to come under or to come under the mission of. Amen. Mm -hmm. Like a sergeant submitting to a colonel, the wife must submit to her husband in every area unless it would cause her to disobey her commander in chief, which is Jesus Christ, our Lord. Yeah. Amen. But the wife also must submit to Christ's leadership because in order for her to follow her husband's leadership as, in, as Christ, she must submit to Christ. Yeah. Amen. So not only does this teach that wives must submit to their husbands, but the implication is that they must first submit to the Lord mm. because the husband is just a representation of Christ's leadership no matter how frail that representation may be yeah. it is in submitting to Christ and abiding in his word and loving him that the wife will find the ability to submit to her husband mm. why? because she will see Christ in her husband mm. why? because she is submitted to Christ yeah. amen so this will be especially true in dealing with a husband who does not know the Lord who, or who is far from him. As we learned in uh, 1 Peter 3, <coughs> excuse me, verses 1 and 2 from the Passion Translation. It says, And now let me speak to the wife. Be devoted to your own husbands, so that even if some of them do not obey the word of God, your kind conduct may win them over without, uh, without you saying a thing. For when they observe your pure godly life before God, it will impact them deeply. Amen. Amen. I think that can work both ways, don't you? Mm. <coughs> but submission to Christ is what makes the difference in how we deal with things and our relationships. Mm. Amen. The fall corrupted God's uh, original uh, design for the husband and the wife. Because of sin, the husband naturally has a tendency to try to dominate his wife or to treat his wife as a doormat. Mm. The tendency for the wife is the same. However, God's plan is for the husband to love and serve his wife and for the wife to submit to him. Mm. They both have a responsibility, amen, to raise the children in the admonition of the mm. Lord. But ultimately, the husband will be held accountable to God for his leadership or lack of leadership over his family. Yes. So, here are some concluding points now. 
In thinking about your role in marriage, consider the example that Jesus provided from his life on earth. He fully exemplified servant leadership. Amen. Balancing headship of the body of believers and submission to God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Matthew 20, verse 26 to 27. But it shall not be among you. But whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. Mm -hmm. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Yeah. Amen. The Passion Translation says, But this is not your calling. You will lead by a completely different model. Mm. The greatest one among you will live as the one who is called to serve others. Because the greatest honor and authority is reserved for the one with the heart of a servant yes, hallelujah so society standards for marriage and for the roles and responsibilities of husbands and wives are ever changing and often do not align with scripture mm. couples must regularly consult the bible for direction and guidance as it reveals god's design for marriage and it helps identify and correct unbiblical thinking mm -hmm. These roles are designed to be complementary. Amen. Amen. The scripture contains general and specific teachings uh, concerning both the roles of the husband and the wife. Amen. Amen. So therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, consideration must be given to both husbands and wives. Amen. Amen. God designed these roles to complement one another yes. and one role is incomplete without the other mm. isn't that right amen. amen for example wives are able to submit to their husbands more easily when husbands love their wives with the self-sacrificing love that christ exemplified on earth mm -hmm. likewise husbands more naturally show love and affection toward their wives when the husbands feel esteemed and valued that's true you know it's balanced. It does work. Amen. I know that Moen, um, is, um, uh, you know, has shown me great respect and esteems me and values me. Amen. But she also knows that I esteem her and respect her and love her in the same way. I honor her and I value her. Amen. And that's what's key in the relationship. Mm -hmm. Do you place value on each other? Do you honor each other? Do you respect each other? Do you extend that love to each other from a biblical perspective? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So both the husband and the wife need to flow in line with God's word when it comes to their marriage. Mm. Each must value working within their God-given roles. I cannot emphasize that enough. We are not here to control one another, but to equally bring stability to our marriages through showing love, respect, and honor to our God-given roles. Mm. Amen. Mm. Each spouse should practice mutual respect honor and submission but your first port of call is this when you submit to christ you will have no issue submitting one to another mm. let's just make that very clear amen? amen it's all about how you apply what the word of god says in your daily lives yes. amen living out your roles in marriage agreeing on and fulfilling responsibilities and making decisions for your family should be a joint process characterized by mutual submission amen. amen your actions and decisions should be consistent with your love for the lord rather than selfish ambition amen, amen. amen. so i'm going to conclude with this scripture verse and then pastor morning is going to pray colossians 3 23 this is the king james version it says whatsoever you do do it heartily as to the lord and not unto men mm. amen the amplified bible says the amplified classic says whatever may be your task work at it heartily from the soul as something done for the lord and not for men mm. amen. amen and the passion translation says this put your heart and soul into every activity you do as though you are doing it for the Lord himself and not merely for others. Mm. Everything we do is about the Lord. Right. Amen. Following his principles. Amen. Mm. We have gotten this far, myself and Maureen, because we have put the word of God 
into practice in our daily lives for the past 34 years. Amen. Amen. And long may it continue. <laughs> Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. Just pray for that part of mind before. Dear Lord, we just thank you for this time that we've been able to share today the wonderful thoughts that you've put into the heart of Pastor Colin as he's really expanded the word today yeah. about the roles, finishing up uh, on this subject of the roles of husbands and wives and valuing the roles of each other. Yeah. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you will help us to live our, our roles in marriage, agreeing on and fulfilling our responsibilities Amen. and making decisions for our family mm. uh, in, in according to your word and according to your way, mm. that we will value one another, that the husbands will love their wives. Yes. If the husbands love their wives, they will treat them well. Mm. Because, you know, if we, we love you, if the husbands love their wives that like you love the church, yes. they will not abuse their wives. They won't be rough towards their wives. Amen. They won't be disrespectful towards their wives Amen. they won't treat, treat their, their wives harshly and disrespect them mm. that won't happen if the husbands love their wives Amen. and if the wives submit themselves to their husband if they love them and they value them mm. They show them respect. Yes. You know, it, the, the two things will gel that much better. And it's easier, easier for us to follow your commands mm. if, we are for, if we are doing what you tell us to do. Amen. And then it will make the relationship work better together. Mm. Your ways work, Lord. When we do what you called us to do, mm. it guarantees success in every area of life. Amen. And I pray, Lord, that those who are not experiencing a good relationship will make the decision that they're going to follow your will and yes. your way and, and wreck Amen. the things that they're doing wrong so that they can get the best out of their relationship and you can turn things around. Amen. Oh Father you delight in bringing breakthroughs in every area. Mm. We pray that there will be a breakthrough Amen. in every dysfunctional marriage, every dysfunctional mm. family today mm. and that we will make the decision to follow your will and your way. Let your word mm. be the guiding force of our lives amen. in Jesus mighty name. Amen. 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 You are most welcome, um, Sister Andrea. Always a pleasure to, to see you. Uh, you've been with us, you've journeyed with us, and we just appreciate you uh, so much. Amen. And we keep each other in prayer. Bless the name of the Lord. the Lord. We've had a fantastic time with you today. Uh, next month we're going to be starting on a, a new topics, but we are continuing uh, to be led of the Holy Spirit. And whatever the Lord tells us to do, that's what we're going to do. Amen. Amen. And we are grateful to God for his love and Amen. his mercy uh, towards us. Amen. Amen. And please, too, take the opportunity to share with anyone that you feel may benefit. You can get uh, more of our Bone of My Bone School of Ministry on our BTM Life Like YouTube page. Amen. Amen. So, can I also say that, you know, not only is this, we talk about dysfunctional families and, mm. and relationships, but it's good for single people to learn these as well, because, mm. you know, if you're not in a relationship, it can help you to know what to avoid or, yeah. or how you can get help to your relationship should you get into yeah. a situation where you get married, how you can get help. So it's good for both singles and for married couples. Amen. But we're praying for a re re revival of marriages and also we want to pray for the restoration of families as we have done so today yeah. amen um also uh if you uh, have been enjoying the ministry we would we would greatly uh, recommend that you um that uh, if you desire to sow into the ministry amen uh we do put a lot of programs out uh, throughout the year and we're happy to do that that's fine but do they uh, do cost they do cost so yeah. do, getting do, equipment and everything yeah and, uh, and, what have, and we want to be of greater service. There's so yeah. much more. Pastor Collins has got so many ideas yeah. about what he wants to do to expand the ministry. But we're going to need your help. Mm. So if the Lord lays it upon your yes. heart to help us out, we would greatly appreciate you sewing into the ministry. Amen. And you can do so by going to our website, btmlifelight.co.uk. Uh, that's btmlifelight.co.uk. Just go to the donation tab and you will be able to... Uh, make a donation from there amen, amen. also uh, if you in need of ministry uh, you need personal ministry you need prayers uh, for your relationship for your marriage um, even if you're a single person and you would like us to pray for you then please do let us know by going to our website btmlifelight.co.uk and make contact with us it will all be private and confidential and we will stand with you in agreement with prayer if there's advice you need, uh, uh, prayers that you need, whatever it is, please do get in touch with us. Amen. Amen. So the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you 
and the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and keep you in perfect peace. Amen. And until next time, stay, stay blessed, blessed, stay focused, focused and, and stay, stay safe. safe. Bye for now. And remember to share, 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 share and be a blessing to somebody else today. God bless you. God bless you.